Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. You guys, today we're talking the original series. We are in season one, episode three, Bay of Married Pig. I'm so excited to cover this one because this is the one where Miranda goes on the date with the lady and announces that she is not a lesbian and it just slaps us in the face because of what happens in Just Like That. So you know we have to talk about it just like that and tie it into Sex and the City. Okay, so the way this one's working is I am launching it for free to everybody. Now, for you guys that haven't signed up to Patreon, jump on and sign up. This is the kind of content you'll get plus a whole lot more. If you're getting this on Patreon, fear not, I'm giving you another bonus episode this week because you guys are awesome and have already signed up for my Patreon. Thank you for that. So if you're interested, go to patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. Find me there and let's get on with the show. Okay, Bay of Married Pigs. It aired June 1st, 1998. We start out with Carrie in her bucket hat. You know, I love the fashions. This one, not so much. (laughs) So this is her outfit. She is going with her friend's patients and her husband, Peter. She's invited to their Hamptons home for the weekend. They live on the beach, so she's there for it. She says they're the perfect married couple. Patience was p- played by Jennifer Guthrie. She was in an episode of 90210 and NYPD Blue. Peter is played by David Healy. He was in Luke Cage as well as Daredevil. So this episode's theme is all about singles versus marrieds. She's explaining as the single house guest, she's required to sing for her supper. So she has to give them tidbits of her sexual escapades around the city. And they're happily married. She said she'd hate them if it wasn't for their house on the beach. So everything's going good, right? At dinner, they're laughing, they're sharing stories. The next morning, Carrie wakes up. She's excited to take in the spectacular view, and you already know why I'm laughing, because she does take in, I don't know if it's spectacular, but a view. She runs into Peter in the hallway, and for some inexplicable reason, he doesn't have pants on. My husband saw this where he just had his shirt on and no pants and said, hey, it's Winnie the Pooh. So after that, Patience comes home and says, hey, Carrie, what's happening? She's gone out and got some groceries, and Carrie says, well, I ran into Peter in the hallway without his underwear on. P.S. Congratulations. (laughs) And obviously, Patience is very upset and says, honey, did Carrie see your dick in the hallway? So yeah, that's an uncomfortable conversation. So Carrie is quickly escorted out of the house, and that's it for her Hampton's getaway, not so relaxing. So Carrie, Miranda, Charlotte, Samantha, they all go to lunch. And I love when they have the scenes of the four of them together. There's my Samantha, who I love dearly. Uh, So Miranda's trying to get details on how big it was. The waiter comes over with fresh pepper with this huge grinder. And Carrie kind of nods like, hello. And Samantha says that she thinks the whole table could use a lot of fresh pepper. So it was just classic Samantha. I love her. She says married women are threatened by single women because single women can have sex at any time with anyone. And Carrie says we can. So then we see interviews of women who are married and some women who are anti-marriage. And we just kind of, you know, they interject those interviews throughout. I know it's in the first season, possibly in the second. We'll see. Carrie and Stanford are taking a walk talking about married people. Stanford said it's not just the straight people that are all rushing to get married, gay people are as well. And right at that time, Carrie runs into a friend. His name is Joe. Joe is played by Peter Rennie. He was in Boiler Room and Smash. And his partner named Lou, who is played by Lou Liberatore. And he was in Nurse Jackie, which is a show that I really enjoyed. So they tell her, we have a surrogate. We just need a top-notch egg. What are your thoughts on donating? Carrie is stunned at (laughs) silence. She, uh, they, they offer her their card and says, we'll pay. And she can't even speak. Stanford takes the card, rips it in half, tosses it into her purse. Meanwhile, you guys, this is a pivotal scene. This will come back so much later in the, you know, in the show and in the, and just like that stuff. So here's Miranda. She has to attend the softball league. It's a game put on by her firm. She agreed to be fixed up with somebody named Sid. So it's a blind date. She doesn't want to go to another function alone, so she agrees to be set up. The person setting her up walks her over, and she's surprised that it's a woman. Sid is played by Joanna Adler. Now, you might recognize her because she was in Orange is the New Black. She played a chaplain for several years. She also was in American Crime Story Impeachment. 
Okay, so Miranda pulls Jeff, the guy, aside and says, what the hell? Uh, I'm not lesbian. I'm not gay. And, and when did single, being single, translate to being gay? These are her words. So he says, oh, want me to go over and fix it? She's like, no, I'll handle it. She walked over and says that they had a good laugh and they decided, you know what, let's just stay and play ball. So they do well in in the game and they got the attention of the senior partner, Charles, who walks up to them afterwards and says, you know, great job. My wife and I are having a dinner party on the 12th. We'd love it if you could make it. And Miranda doesn't say a word and says, we'd love to. Okay, so Miranda's over at Carrie's house, and can we just look at Carrie's fashion for a minute? This is totally how I remember her from the series. This 90s look with this tube top shirt dress, whatever she's wearing here, just, uh, it's you know, beige, skin-colored look, but she looks fantastic. So Miranda explains to Carrie what's happened, but she says she's going to go through with it. She's going to go to dinner. She's determined to make partner. So she's going to take Sid with her to the, to the dinner. She's going to fake it, basically. So Miranda leaves, and Carrie talks about the fear of unknown, that married people don't necessarily hate singles. They just want to figure us out. So she goes to lunch with her favorite couple. She calls them David and Lisa. David is played by John Connolly. He was in Triple X and Ali. Stephanie Vendetto plays Lisa. She was in Four Christmases. I just love the dynamic of this couple. I remember Lisa being fun and feisty and quick-witted, you know, from the scene. And she is. She jokes about having to stop seeing other people and trying to remember that they're married, that sort of thing. So they're making jokes about it. And Carrie just kind of blurts out that she doesn't know if she wants to get married someday. And she doesn't know if she's the marrying kind. And right at that time, their friend shows up. This is Sean. He's played by Scott Rabinowitz. He was in Medium and in Jag. So it was a fix-up, right? And the original friends left, so they're still having lunch. And she realizes she's having lunch with the elusive marrying guy. And after this, they seem to have a really good time. We see a montage. It's like a week of them meeting for dates, movies, coffee, dinner, that sort of thing. We find out he's moving into an apartment. He's going to have a housewarming soon, and he invites Carrie and her friends to that. So from here, we get a very brief one-second shot of Miranda and Sid as they go to the partner dinner. Leave me. We'll have more to talk about when they leave the dinner because some stuff goes down. Then we go straight to Carrie, Samantha, and Charlotte. They go to the housewarming party. So it's awkward as hell, right? Because they walk in as three single girls, but everybody there has paired off into twos. It's all couples. And Samantha looks, gives Carrie a dirty look. And Charlotte is trying to desperately to join the married club, we find out. So, I mean, we kind of already knew this, but it's reaffirmed here. Samantha's doing tequila shots, right? And she's just kind of over this thing. She's trying to talk stocks to this guy. It's just totally innocent. But his wife comes up and pulls him away to lay claim on him. And so this really drives her to do the shots. We found we find out here that Samantha's actually banged several of his friends. Charlotte says he's going to ask you to marry him to Carrie because he's just such a serious guy. He bought this apartment with a bedroom for a child, that sort of thing. Uh, Carrie says Charlotte's very good at reading real estate. Samantha says, if you turn into one of those married assholes, I will take you out. So an hour and a half into the party, Carrie says that she's a prisoner of war. Samantha is completely toasted. Can we talk about Samantha's dress? How fabulous does she look? That color is stunning, but there's not really any color that's not stunning. I think Carrie looks good here. Again, classic Carrie look, the little black dress. I think she looks pretty. I like her hair like this. I like her eye makeup. So this is the funniest part of the episode because who shows up? But Patience and Peter. So Carrie tries to apologize about what went down at the beach house. Patience keeps saying, forget it. Don't mention it. Samantha, who is completely wasted, walks up, realizes who they are, and starts saying, I've heard about you, haha, ha, peppermill dick, peppermill dick. <laughs> and it really, it cracked me up. I thought it was really funny. Uh, I love Samantha. I love drunk Samantha. She's just really funny in this scene. Okay, it's time to get our feelings out. So we all have lots of feelings about it just like that. Miranda is no longer Miranda. She's had a head transplant and a personality transplant, and they've completely turned her into Cynthia Nixon, not Miranda. Because here, Miranda is leaving dinner. She's leaving with Sid. 
the boss says, you know, it was, it was great. Let's do it again sometime. Miranda says, Sid, why don't you go to the elevator and talks to her boss on the side. She does explain to him that they're not a real couple, that she just took advantage of the situation because she really wanted to talk about the firm and to stay in his good graces, basically. His response is, my wife would be disappointed. She's looking to add a lesbian couple to our circle. And Miranda makes an insane face. And can I pause it here and say, you guys... This is the exact storyline of it just like that. Now it's been flipped on its ear. Miranda is a lesbian and uh, Charlotte is doing this. She's having uh, dinner parties and trying to invite people of color so that way she can add them to her circle, just like this guy says. And how ridiculous is that? How many years later and... They're using these same, same storylines, except for they've completely messed up the characters. Okay, so Miranda is completely shocked by this. You know, I'm completely shocked by it just like that. So they ride down in the elevator, and Miranda says that she's wonders what her life would be like to be in a couple. And so she leans over and kisses Sid, right? And she says, yep, I'm definitely straight. And Sid agrees and says, yes, you are. And Miranda apologized. You guys, what is happening? Again, do the writers not remember this storyline? How come we all remember it, but they don't seem to? So Charlotte gets a very drunk Samantha home. She's just wasted. She hits on the doorman and keeps saying hi, hi to him. He's a young Irishman. He's super cute. And Samantha notices and says, hey, I like you. So... A few hours later, Samantha sneaks down to find this doorman and she asks him for a cigarette and a light and then a kiss and yeah, things go from there. He's very nervous that somebody will see, but she brings him upstairs to Charlotte's apartment. Charlotte hears something. She wakes up and finds the doorman there. He apologizes. He's leaving. She says, I'm going to the bathroom and when I come out, you will not be here and we are not going to mention this again. Okay, so Carrie's over at Sean's, and Carrie's saying, this just, this isn't going to work out. Obviously, Sean wants to get married, and Carrie's just not sure, and Sean gets very upset, saying, all I hear is that women want to get married, and I'm ready, and now I can't find anybody. What's going on? And uh, Carrie apologizes and said, hey, maybe I might have somebody in mind for you, and we find out it's Charlotte. He's going to set her up with Charlotte. So you guys, they start looking at China patterns as Charlotte would, like on the second date. And he says, I always wanted this pattern for formal dining. And that's a deal breaker for Charlotte. She says, are you serious? And she broke it off right there. Sounds like he was American classic and she was French country. So Charlotte comes home. The doorman says, why hasn't your friend called me? She's like, I don't know. So Carrie walks home and says, it talks about the singles versus the marrieds. Maybe they aren't that different. Sometimes there's nothing better than meeting your single girlfriends for a night at the movies. So then the song Respect plays very loudly and they walk into the movies. And it was such a great ending to the episode. I love when the four of them are together. I find it so much fun and what a great way to show that the girlfriends are there for each other as opposed to the flaming pile of crap that is and just like that. So that's it for the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Patreon peeps, I got another episode coming out in just a few days. Non-Patreon peeps, what are you waiting for? Jump on. There's so many people over there. It's so much fun. Come join us for the watches. Come talk to us. It's awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.